السلام عليكم ورحمه الله وبركاته الله اكبر الله اكبر الله اكبر الله اكبر اشهد ان لا أشهد أن لا إله إلا الله أشهد أن محمد رسول أشهد أن محمد رسول الله حي على الصلاة حي على الفلاح حي على الله أكبر الله أكبر لا إله إلا الله الحمد لله الحمد لله نحمد ونستعين ونستغفر ونعوذ بالله من شرور أنفسنا ومن سيئات أعمالنا من يهده الله فلا مضل له ومن يضلله فلا هادي له ونشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له ونشهد أن محمداً عبده ورسوله أرسله بالهدى ودين الحق أرسله بالهدى والنور All praise is to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala We praise Allah We ask Allah the Almighty to guide us to protect us We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to protect us not only the wrong from the wrong that is around us but we ask Allah the Almighty the all-powerful the all-knowing the sustainer the guide to protect us from our own desires, at times from our own inclination towards that which is wrong and displeasing to our Lord. 
We recognize the fact that those whom Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala guides, no one can lead astray. And those whom Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala allows to go astray due to our own insistence, due to our own insistence, no one can bring them back to the guidance except and only Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. With that in mind, we bear witness that there is no one worthy of worship except Allah. And we bear witness that Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam was a slave, his servant, his messenger, best of worshippers, who brought to us a guidance, a light, which followed or which when and if followed is guaranteed to lead us towards the mercy of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, consequently leading us to Jannah. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala help us all to be those who are recipients of Al-Firdaus, of Jannah, inshaAllah. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala shower His mercy upon us. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala help us to reap the fruits of this blessed month, inshaAllah, and make the most of it. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala help us to utilize our time in the best way possible. And may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala allow us to refrain from anything small or large, significant or insignificant, which is displeasing to Him. And may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala give us the patience and the courage and the strength to follow that which is pleasing to Allah regardless of the difficulty that might be in the way of those actions and that lifestyle. Say, I mean, I mean, I mean, I mean, subhanAllah. Just to start, today, subhanAllah, marks six weeks since Abdul Hadi, after Jum'ah, returned to his Allah, returned to his Lord in the abode of the All-Merciful, inshaAllah. So we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to forgive him his mistakes and enter him into Jannah and forgive him of all the sins and make this time during the grave one that is of pleasing and of access to Jannah, inshaAllah. Say, Ameen. 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 Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala reminds us in the Quran, brothers and sisters, A'udhu Billahi Minash Shaitan Rajeem. إِنَّمَا الْمُؤْمِنُونَ الَّذِينَ إِذَا ذُكِرَ اللَّهُ وَجِلَتْ قُلُوبُهُمْ وَإِذَا تُلِيَتْ عَلَيْهِمْ آيَاتُهُ زَادَتْهُمْ إِيمَانًا وَعَلَى رَبِّهِمْ يَتَوَكَّلُونَ Subhanallah. These are the two ayat, the ones, if you were here, I used, I began my last khutbah with. And these particular ayat have somehow made a significant impact on my thought process. Because here is so unique and amazing, subhanAllah, that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is simplifying for us what a believer or who rather a believer is. And making it so clear for us and simplifying for us so then we have no more questions or doubts. And then beyond that, only thing left for us is to understand, to absorb, and to see if we can align with this definition. So Allah says, إِنَّمَا الْمُؤْمِنُونَ الَّذِينَ إِذَا ذُكِرَ اللَّهُ وَجِلَتْ قُلُوبُهُمْ That believers are those, believers are those, that when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is mentioned, their hearts are shaking. وَإِذَا تُلِيَتْ عَلَيْهِمْ آيَاتُهُ زَادَتْهُ And when the ayat of Allah, some take it literally as the ayat are rehearsed of the Qur'an, or the signs of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala are surrounded, are rehearsed as we observe the signs of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala around us. وَإِذَا تُلِيَتْ عَلَيْهِمْ آيَاتُهُ زَادَتْهُ and when we observe, when the signs of Allah are rehearsed around us, the believer does what? Or what happens to the believer? Zadatum iman. The faith is increased. Wa'ala rabbihim And the trust is placed, subhanAllah, in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Now the criteria in this context is very simple. It's very simple. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, الَّذِينَ يُقِيمُونَ الصَّلَاةَ وَمِمَّا رَزَقْنَاهُمْ يُنْفِقُونَ These are the ones 
there is an expanded criteria that comes as a consequence of establishing the salah. But that's a whole different discussion in itself. Is the salah, the engagement is salah, and what impact salah should, not always does, what impact it should have on us. But here, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gives us the, the bird's eye view. These are the ones who established the salah. And to translate it simply, they give from what they have in their possession. Subhanallah. It's interesting that when we read these translations, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is not telling us they give from what they have earned, they give from what they own. Right? Because ultimately, nothing is, nothing is ours. Even ourselves, if you remember last time in the khutbah I mentioned, that what a blessing that even ourselves, Allah says, that we belong to whom? We belong to Allah. Inna lillahi wa inna ilahi rajiun. Allah says we belong. You belong to him. Subhanallah. What an honor. So Allah says we detach ourselves from material. Detach from the material and you spend it for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And then Allah Azza wa Jal goes further to say, Ula'ika humul mu'minun haqqa. Subhanallah. Ula'ika humul mu'minun haqqa. Started by, Innama al mu'minun. Who are the believers? And here Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, these are the believers. Ula'ika humul. These are the believers who are on the haqq. They are on the truth. Lahum darajatun inda rabbihim wa maghfiratu wa rizqun kareem. Subhanallah, listen to these two aspects. For them is what? For them is, right? Their grades for them with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And the more righteous, the higher grade we have with Allah. And rizqun kareem, a blessed sustenance. Now sustenance is not simply just our material means to survive. Sustenance is every single aspect that keeps us alive spiritually and materially. So Ar Razak is reminding us that sustenance is with Allah and is given to those who qualify as believers. For a few moments today, I'm going to focus on two aspects from these ayat as there's so much in it, there's so much depth in it, subhanAllah. But first, this concept of ayat, the signs of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And what better time for us in this modern day, so to speak, where we see the signs, we see what is happening around the whole world. We don't simply hear about things anymore, brothers and sisters. And alhamdulillah, we don't rely on, 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 on main news networks or in our governments to tell us what's happening around the world. Because those views are always skewed. CNN doesn't tell you what's going on. Fox definitely doesn't tell you what's going on. But social media has taken up that angle. We look at Gaza. We look at Syria. We look at Yemen. I have shared with you, I've stood here after Salatul Aisha asking for support for, for charity organizations. And I mentioned unbelievable statistics that I, when I came to sort of learn those numbers, couldn't come to terms with when I heard 233,000 people dead in Yemen from what? From hunger, starvation, from disease. Thousands and thousands of, of martyrs returning to Allah in Gaza. And then we can just keep going and keep going. These, wallahi, brothers and sisters, are signs of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And when these signs, we come to learn, we observe them, we look at ourselves and we say, do we qualify in this context as believers? Because a believer is doing two things, according to these ayat. That the faith is increased. Faith is increased. Not like, I've literally had, and I'm sure you've come across this too. I know people personally who have said, why is all this injustice in the world? Why children dying and suffering? God is unjust. Astaghfirullah al-Azim. 
and then they become somewhat detached from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and begin to question things because they felt that they know better than God. Subhanallah. La hawla wa la quwwata illa billah. But a believer, rather, is increased in faith and places his or her trust in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So signs are of struggle all around us. But there's more to it. Subhanallah. On an occasion, Abdurrahman bin Auf was fasting. And I hope we're familiar with Abdurrahman bin Auf. Abdurrahman bin Auf, one can say, even though he didn't live like us from the comfort level, he was like us or better from the wealth level. He was one of the wealthiest companions in Medina and Mecca. So for him, breaking fast at the end of the day was similar to us. For us, it's not something unusual. Actually, it would be highly, highly unusual if at the end of a fasting day, we have nothing to eat. That's not unusual. That's a common occurrence in Gaza and in Kashmir or in Somalia or in Kenya or in, or in, or in Yemen and so on and so forth. And oddly enough, we can keep naming the countries where people are struggling and unfortunately, every country we name is a Muslim country. Mostly. 80% of world refugee population, 80% of world refugee population is Muslim. Subhanallah. So Abdul Rahman bin Auf, he's like us. But he doesn't live like us. And his thought process is not like ours. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala align us with his process of thinking and with that of Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Say ameen. So at the end of the day, it's about Maghrib time. And Adhan is about to be called. So somebody comes and places a plate of food in front of him to break his fast with. And then he hears the Adhan. And Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam has told us very clearly that for a fasting believer, there are two times when the person is, is joyful. One is when he or she breaks his fast and second when the person meets Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So breaking the fast then is what? A moment of joy, supposedly. Generally speaking. But as the adhan is called, Abdurrahman bin Auf looks at his food and he does not break his fast. And he says, listen to what he says. He says, and this is during the time of Umar bin Khattab. So years have passed since the Prophet ﷺ. Times have changed. And during the time of Umar, as we know, the Ummah was flourishing from a material perspective to a point where they couldn't find recipients of zakah. Zakat al-mal, they didn't, they didn't have people around them in Medina and, and in the immediate cities to people to give it to because Ummah was doing well. So that's the context of this. So he looks back, he's reminiscing, he goes back in time and he says, Hamza was with me in the battle of Uhud. Hamza was with me in the battle of Uhud and he became shaheed. Subhanallah. And he says he was better than me. Then he says, Umair, Mus'ab bin Umair was with me, he says, Abdurrahman in the battle of Uhud and he was better than me. Why? Because they both became shaheed. Hamza was with me, he became shaheed. Mus'ab was with me, he became shaheed, and they're better than me. And then he says, Subhanallah. Then he says, now, the earth has become spread open for us. He's talking about how people live now. There's nothing lacking from material perspective. And we know our teachings. We are told that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is merciful. So every individual, regardless whether you believe in him or not, he will still have mercy on you. Even those who reject Allah, Allah is merciful to them. But in the hereafter, the greater mercy is for the believers. And for those who reject Allah, even on them, Allah says, He will give them reward in the dunya for their goodness. No one is left, no one is left without a response to their good actions. 
So Abdul Rahman bin Auf reflects on all of this and he says, now the earth has been spread open for us. Maybe this is our reward. Maybe this is it. Hamza and Mus'ab, Shaheed, Jannah. I'm here. I got everything. Is this it? Is this it? And that moment of joy, even the Rasul said, this is a, supposed to be a moment of joy. Subhanallah, he pushes the plate away. He pushes the food away. And he begins to cry. Wow. Abdul Rahman bin Auf. This guy was strong. He was like Omar. His reputation was of one of the strongest, mighty companions. Appearance is strong and, and, and strength coming. And you could see the vibe coming out. And that powerful, strong man is humbled before Allah and weeps out of fear. Is this our reward? It's a simple question I leave us with, brothers and sisters, for us to reflect upon. And again, not, to, not for us to feel guilty, because as from the blessings of Allah, there should be no guilt. There should be no guilt. So when we eat, we don't feel guilty. But we should feel grateful. And we should express gratitude. So it's not the guilt, it's the gratitude. So for us to think that fear statement, is this our reward? And each one of us, we reflect upon that and then we react and respond to it by making sure that it is not in the dunya. So we do things for the sake of Allah. Alladina yuqimuna salata wa mimma razaqna hum yunfiqun. Allah, may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala help us and guide us and help us to be those who take heed from the words of the Quran, who take heed from the example of our Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and who love, feel the love of Allah and Rasul within our heart and who do our very, very utmost best to follow the example of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Say ameen, ameen, ameen. Before I sit, can we just come forward? I see a lot of gaps here and yet I see crowd in the back just crunching together. So just please fill all the gaps and move forward so we make space. There are a lot of people coming in. Just move up quickly, please, brothers. Don't hesitate because just, just move up, move up. Everyone move up. Everyone just move up or fill a space. If there's a space next to you or around you, please fill that, inshallah. inshallah. Ask Allah and he will respond. الحمد لله رب العالمين والصلاة والسلام على رسول الكريم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم all praises to Allah سبحانه وتعالى peace and blessings be upon his messenger Muhammad صلى الله عليه وسلم سبحان الله brothers and sisters there is no question and we're constantly reminded we're constantly reminded in in a serious way that life is temporary we see it you log on to Instagram or TikTok or Facebook. Hopefully that's what comes up in your feed. That we see what's happening around the world. And hopefully that reminds us of our responsibility in the big picture. And the fact that impact that we should have and the impact that we could have. And as we think about the impact that we need to have, it is important for us to think about what, what are the key areas? Where do we need to strengthen ourselves as a community? While we have no choice and we are obligated to help those who are struggling, to feed the hungry, to bring peace to those who are engulfed in war, to take care of people. At the same time, as we fulfill our obligations to do that, we must look at the big picture. And see how do we mobilize ourselves, how do we strengthen ourselves, and what are the factors of strength that really bring about a change to reduce and hopefully remove those struggles from humanity. And that reminds me of a, an event that 
we learn about where Umar bin Khattab radiallahu anhu, again, we're in the time of Umar again, as we were during the statement of Abdurrahman bin Auf. Umar radiallahu anhu, one time, during his time of his khalafa, khalafa, he was sitting in the masjid, in the Prophet's mosque. And he had some people around him. So he, there were two people sitting immediately next to him. So he turned to one of them and he said, if you could be granted anything that you ask for from Allah, what would you ask? I wish I had time to stop and let us reflect on this to see what we, what our answer would be. What would I ask for? What would you ask for? And the companion says to Umar, radiallahu anhu, Ya Amir al Mu'mineen, I would ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for gold in the amount of mountain of Uhud so that I may spend it for the sake of Allah. Subhanallah, listen to this, right? Not so I may get a house, nice house, a car, you know, I can just live large and live like this and that. So everybody look at me and say, man, look at that. This brother rolling up in the masjid, you know, in this, look at this car. Look at the house, mashallah. That's fine. By the way, nothing wrong with that. As long as it's not internalized within the heart. Nothing wrong with being comfortable. As long as it's within context and it's not overcoming us. Then Omar looks at the other companion and he says, what would you ask? And he says, same thing. Pretty much the same thing. And this shows the thought process of all of us as average people. You see, Amir al-Mu'mineen, I would ask Allah for silver in the amount of mountain of Wahad. Gold is taken, so he says silver. Why? So that I may spend it in the sake of or for the cause of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Now these two individuals, I'm assuming, they're reflecting upon this question. And they're thinking, why is Omar asking me this? Or asking us this? And then, so they turn the question around and they pose it to the Amir al-Mu'mineen. Say, Ya Amir al-Mu'mineen, what would you ask for? And there are two different narrations of his response and what he said. I'll share with you one. And listen to this. This is subhanallah. This is yet so obvious, yet so powerful. He doesn't say gold. He doesn't say silver. He says, I would, I would wish or I would ask for a place like this. Referring to the house of Allah. I would ask for a place like this to be filled with people like Abu Bakr. Subhanallah al -Azim. So material is useful. Very useful for comfort and for propagation, for strength, for structure. Material is needed. But what's ultimately the most powerful thing, brothers and sisters, is what? It's people. It's people. You know, we have our HR departments at work, in our offices, in our corporations. What do they manage? The human resource. You make sure they're a huge department just to manage resources. We have big organizations, nonprofits, who have directors and chiefs of volunteer management just to manage the people, not the employees, that's the HR, but to manage those in certain organizations who are going to be helping and capitalize on that resource. And this is what Omar bin Khattab radiallahu anhu is reminding us. That that is where the strength is. Now why do I conclude the khutbah with this? Because as a young man, subhanAllah, when I was growing up in Los Angeles, we were active in throughout the Southern California region. We had some play, people who were guiding us and working with us, may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bless them, who really helped us to move forward, who really provided us guidance and supervision and insight into why we are here and what we're trying to do. And one of the main centers that I ended up being a part of and eventually led the youth group there, led the Sunday school, and some of those kids, mashallah, have, have grown up now to become people who, are, who have established things in the world for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. 
And we also started a school in that center. This was Islamic Center of Hawthorne. Back in late 90s, we started the Islamic school called Al Huda, Al Huda Academy. And that school is now flourishing. That center is still in the older part of Los Angeles near the airport, but is literally, alhamdulillah, served the community in a tremendous way. SubhanAllah, back in the day, I remember, may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala give Jannah to Shaykh Yusuf al Qardawi. When he would come to Los Angeles, this would be the center where he would come and give his, give his lecture. This was the hub. This was the place. And this is still the place. And we grew up there, we gained, and we gave. It's far away from us, right? But when opportunity came, say, can you help? They're raising funds for expansion and for growth. I couldn't let it go. Because this is my masjid, this was my home. Even though this is my home now. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bless this home. But every home, we may say is ours, but ultimately it's the house of Allah. And we hope and plead to Allah to let us have a piece of every center, every place where Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is remembered and where through where peace and mercy is propagated. So we're here to fill these houses with people like Abu Bakr. And we're here to create safe houses for our youth, for our younger generation, so they may grow up, and I use that word intentionally, they may grow up sheltered. And I use that because people used to argue with me. That oh, Islamic schools, they shelter kids. And I was shocked when I heard that argument. I heard it multiple times. And I was like, people usually get defensive and say, no, we don't. And I'm like, hello, what do you mean we don't? The whole idea, shelter, you, even the concept of sheltering is what? Protection. So are you going to criticize a masjid or a school or a home, a family for sheltering kids and say, oh my God, you're sheltering people. You need to stop. Okay, you stop. We're going to expand and extend those shelters. So I'm here today to ask for help. Inshallah, I will do it after the salah for a few minutes to support Islamic Center of Hawthorne. And to extend and expand that shelter so our, may, our children and our youth may thrive and make an impact across the world, inshallah. Inshallah, inshallah. So just spend a few minutes with me after the salah. Inna Allah wa malaikatu yusalluna ala nabi. Ya ayu al-ladheena amanu sallu alayhi wa sallimu taslima. Allahumma salli ala Muhammad wa ala ali Muhammad kama sallayta ala Ibrahim wa ala ali Ibrahim annaka hamidun majid. Ya Allah, help us and guide us to understand your message. Ya Allah, help us and guide us and open our hearts so we may receive the message of Qur'an and the sunnah of the Prophet ﷺ with an open heart and an open mind. Ya Allah, help us to be those who study the life in detail of our beloved Muhammad ﷺ and give us the patience. Ya Allah, give us the sabr to follow through with every good action that we learn from him. Ya Allah, help us to be those who refrain with passion from that which displeases you, Ya Allah. And help us to be those who are, who are eager and passionate and love doing what is right, Ya Allah. Put the love of goodness within our heart. Ya Allah, help us to be a source of goodness for the humanity, Ya Allah. Ya Allah, help us to be the source of mercy as was Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam for all of humanity, Ya Allah. Ya Allah, help us to be the source of guidance, Ya Allah. Ya Allah, we ask you for courage, Ya Allah. We ask you for health, Ya Allah. We ask you for strength, Ya Allah. We ask you for patience, Ya Allah. We ask you for wealth, Ya Allah. And we ask you, Ya Allah, to make us a source of all of these elements for the whole of humanity. Ya Allah, we ask you to help us to look deep within ourselves and discover our strength. Ya Allah, humble us through that process of discovery and enable us to use those strengths for your sake and your sake only. Ya Allah, I ask you, we ask you to discover, to help us to discover our weaknesses, Ya Allah, and strengthen us through that discovery and give us the ability to attempt to overcome them, Ya Allah. Ameen, Ameen, Ameen. Ya Allah, give Abdul Hadi the highest place in Jannah and open the doors of Jannah for him for now and enter him into Jannah al firdaus in Akhirah, Ya Allah, in the hereafter. Ameen, Ameen, Ameen. Inna salata tanha anil fahshai wal munkar wala dhikrullahi akbar wallahu ya'lamu ma tasna'oon wa akhim salah.
الله أكبر الله أكبر أشهد أن لا إله إلا الله أشهد أن محمد رسول الله حي على الصلاة حي على الفلاح قد قامت الصلاة قد قامت الصلاة الله أكبر الله أكبر لا إله إلا Allah, just please just fill the gaps, close all the space, and hopefully that would create more space for others and also leave no gaps for shaitan, inshallah. Pray as this is your last prayer. Allahu <laughs> Akbar. بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين الرحمن الرحيم مالك يوم الدين إياك نعبد وإياك نستعين اهدنا الصراط المستقيم صراط الذين نعمت عليهم غير المغضوب عليهم ولا الضالين إنما المؤمنون الذين إذا ذكر الله وجلت قلوبهم وإذا تليت عليهم آياته زادتهم إيمانا زادتهم إيمانا وعلى ربهم يتوكلون الذين يقيمون الصلاة ومما رزقناهم ينفقون أولئك هم المؤمنون حقا لهم درجات عند ربهم ومغفرة ورزق كريم الله أكبر سمع الله لمن حمده Allahu Akbar Allahu Akbar Allahu Akbar الله أكبر بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين الرحمن الرحيم مالك يوم الدين إياك نعبد وإياك نستعين اهدنا الصراط المستقيم صراط الذين نعمت عليهم غير المغضوب عليهم ولا الضالين بسم الله ألهاكم التكاثر حتى زرتم المقابر كلا سوف تعلمون ثم كلا سوف تعلمون كلا لو تعلمون علم اليقين لتربن الجحيم ثم لترونها عين اليقين 
ثُمَّ لَتُسْأَلُنَّ يَوْمَ إِذٍ عَنِ النَّعِيمِ الله أكبر سمع الله لمن حمده شكرا لك الحمد حمدا كثيرا طيبا مباركا الله اكبر الله اكبر الله اكبر الله اكبر السلام عليكم ورحمة الله السلام عليكم ورحمة الله استغفر الله استغفر الله استغفر الله اللهم انت السلام ومنك السلام تبارك وتعاليك يا ذا الجلال والاكرام اللهم عنا على ذكرك وشكرك وحسن عبادتك اللهم انك عفو كريم جواد تحب العفو فاعف عنا يا غفور those of you you can stay for a few minutes good if you're leaving please there's a table outside for outside for Islamic Center of Hawthorne all the information in the envelope for Zell and other ways to pay, please make sure you make a donation. Brothers and sisters, the reason I brought up all the different aspects, even the global aspects that we're struggling with as, as a ummah, as, a, as humanity, to show that change is within our reach. And it is from here in America that change is going to take place. As you already have seen that this is many of other communities. You look at even Israel. What do they use as their hub? to drive the resolutions and veto resolutions in UN. They use United States. But we're different. We're looking for peace and mercy. So we need to be wise to make sure that we mobilize ourselves and we raise our youth and young in a manner that's going to have impact, that's going to bring about a change for good, for the sake of Allah, not for evil as their Zionist agendas may be. So just very quickly in the last few minutes, this is one of the key centers, as is our new center here. May Allah bless this place. So just a few hands to help us. I'm going to spend maybe one or two minutes at most, and then we'll stop. Can I have, can I ask one time, one hand to donate $5,000 for the sake of Allah for Islamic Center of Hawthorne, inshallah. It's right near the LAX, the Los Angeles airport. One person, make it, break it down into monthly payments, even if it's long term, over five years or over even longer period, $20 a month, $50 a month. Anybody? Khalas. We'll keep it simple. Insha'Allah. Barakallahu feek. Jazakallah khair. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala accept and bless you and your family. Insha'Allah. Say ameen. Anybody else before we move on? Okay. Thousand dollars. I hope we can get a few hands, insha'Allah, to support this center for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, ultimately for our own protection and our own sake. Anybody for a thousand dollars, make it fifty, ten, twenty dollars a month. Pledge a continuous charity so that you're not burdened with a large amount. Anybody here? Jazakallah khair. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bless you, Abu Amr, inshallah. May Allah bless you and bless your family and give Nabil the highest, 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 highest place in Jannah, inshallah, and give Yusuf, inshallah, healing and health, and Omar and your wife and your, yourself, inshallah. Barakallah feek. Anybody else for $1,000, inshallah? $1,000, brothers and sisters. Just do this quickly so I don't take your time. Anybody else? I don't see the sisters, but I hope somebody is responding, inshallah. Anybody else? $500. I know there's, we're overwhelmed with donation requests in the month of Ramadan, but this is for sustaining something permanently. This is not a bandage. This is, this is a change. Zakallahu khair. Barakallahu fi wa May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bless you and your family. Say ameen. Ameen. Can we have at least, we have two thousands. Can we have three more and then I'll stop inshallah. I'm sorry, I don't know. I think it was five hundred or a thousand. Either or. Anybody for five hundred or a thousand dollars? Let me ask you this. Please raise your hand if you want to donate something, even if it's a dollar. 
If it's a dollar you're going to donate today, which I encourage you to do, just raise your hand. Let me see everybody's hand. Drop a, drop a coin on the way out. So now I'm going to leave it to you, whether you donate 100, 250, 1,000, whatever it may be, but please be generous. This is the house of Allah. وَأَقْرِضُ اللَّهُ قَرْضًا حَسَنًا Imagine Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala asking you to loan him a, 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 a wholesome loan. What a, what a concept. So here I'm standing on behalf, one may say as an ambassador of the center, the house of Allah, to asking us to give our support. So do not leave without making a donation. So if you feel like you can afford 100, please for the sake of Allah, make it a little bit more. Right, so may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala accept from you. Jazakumullah khairan. Assalamu alaykum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Please, the table is outside. Envelopes are there in all different modes of donations. Jazakumullah khairan. Assalamu alaykum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.